Altered State Adventures, The Mutiny of Bartor, Part 6. Nestled within the quiet rain-soaked cobblestone streets of the Haven of Qatar lay the Sunderwolf Inn, a popular drinking establishment favoured by sailors and local townspeople alike. Pazrail and Crumpet, having overheard a tale of a crazed man, and more importantly of a strange stone tablet, interrupted the storyteller and sat down at his table. They listened intently as the priest told them of the night's events of how the man had entered his church, how he had seemed torn between two callings. The human soul that the priest saw behind the man's eyes seemed to be pleading, calling for help, wanting to alleviate the burden of the tablet. But some possessive force or unseen entity was clawing at him, pulling him away and forcing him to leave. Pazrael leaned forward. Tell me, Father, do you know the whereabouts of this man? The priest fell silent. Suddenly, he seemed crestfallen. Eventually, he sighed and said, Oh, yes. Yes, I'm afraid I do. I realized that I... I recognized him. It's a small town, you see. Yeah, we understand, sir. But can you tell us where he is, though? You... You won't harm him, will you? He seems entirely innocent. I believe him to be possessed. Or worse. Nothing will happen to him, father. We only want to help relieve him of the tablet. The priest lifted his head, his eyes wide open. It must be destroyed. You will destroy it, won't you? Pazrael shared a glance with Crumpet before telling their side of the story. Under the table, he clutched tightly at the back, holding the container that concealed the other half of the tablet. We are on a quest, father. We mean to collect both parts of this tablet and vanish them from this realm. And with that, the priest suddenly regained his composure as a fresh wave of adrenaline relinquished him from his drunken grogginess. He rose from his chair as he spoke. Then we must hurry, quickly, before this godforsaken tablet can do any more harm. Crumpet, slightly miffed that he had not had a chance to finish his ale, jumped up and began to follow the priest who is now moving with some pace toward the exit. Where are we going now, eh? We must reach the church. I can explain all to you there. Pazrael opened the door and departed the tavern. He was greeted by the coldness of the relentless rain and a paranoia of frosty eyes upon him. The priest pushed forward, eager to reach the church. Crumpet followed with haste, but turned briefly to face his friend. Pazrael was behind him, but so too were a dozen men armed with wooden planks and cutlasses. Oh, for God's sake! Behind you, Pez! Pazrael dropped his shoulders with expected trepidation as he turned to confront the familiar faces. And where do you think you two lovers are going? Said one of the crew members from the unsinkable two. Another joined in. Yeah, we got us a deck that needs paying, haven't we, lads? Several of the men started chuckling. Pazrael counted six in total. The rain fell heavily as the two sides faced each other. The priest, not knowing what this was about, chose to stay out of sight, hidden in the shadows of a nearby alleyway. Ugh. Listen, I'll give you lot one last chance to run away back to your little ship before you get seriously hurt. But the men said nothing, lifting their weapons as they stepped forward. Pazrael sighed 
and reached for an arrow. For some reason, it shone blue. He realized then that these men were not savages. They were driven to this madness by their close proximity to the tablet. It had affected them slowly but surely upon their voyage from Calcutta to Tulumisho, and it had resulted in a scuffle that had seen one of their friends have his arms severed. This vengeance, although justified in their eyes, would surely still be under the enforced influence of the tablet. The blue arrows would deal a quick compassionate death if needed. We don't need to do this, said Pazrail as he lifted his bow, the glowing blue arrow poised for release. A crew member pointed his cutlass at Pazrail. Ain't your choice to be making, mate. Pazrail sighed as he prepared to fire the arrow. But suddenly, a blur of anger and violence was unleashed before him. Crumpet, it seemed, had had enough. And upon activating some inner power, he rushed upon the men with a speed Pazrail had not seen before. The crewmen immediately became distressed, scattering out of formation in panic and chaos. Cutlasses lashed out at the dwarf, but his axe and shield deflected every blow. Brilliant flashes of light flew in every direction with every impact. Crumpet's armory, when used with extreme smite, expelled an anger and fury forged from the Stormlord himself. Blood began to spray onto the cobblestone streets and flowed with the rainwater down towards the shaking priest. Cries of anger were quickly replaced with cries of pain as Crumpet's steel swung an arc through the air with blurring speed. Pazrail stood motionless in bewilderment and awe and lowered his bow. There was simply no need to use it. For within a matter of seconds, it was all over. <laughs> the men, none mortally injured, yet all in severe pain and agony, picked themselves up and fled the violence. Now Crumpet stood alone, bloodied axe in one hand, bloodied shield in the other, as his breathing slowly returned to a normal pace. <sighs> Focus. Pazrail offered the dwarf some time to come, before he asked, So are you, um... Uh... You okay there, pal? Crumpet turned. His expression was one of complete calm. One that had only recently replaced something else entirely. Well, I, uh, I was just bloody sick of that lot, you know. And I don't think we'll be seeing them again either, eh? Uh, no. No, I don't believe we will, Crumpet. I'm glad they all managed to walk away. Although, a few of them probably wish they hadn't. Come on, my brew. Let's find that church said Crumpet, as he began to walk in the direction they had originally started in. The priest, now out of hiding, rushed over to Pazrail and whispered, uh, The dwarf! Is he okay? Safe, I mean. Pazrail laughed and followed after his friend. <laughs> you know, I honestly can't tell for sure, but he's on our side at least. As the rain began to ease off, and the cobblestone streets gave way to muddy roads, they found themselves at the gates of the old church. The jungle could be seen now, spreading out into the darkness, enticing yet dangerous, completely still yet full of life. Two slim shadows emerged from behind the building and darted across the road. The priest reacted instantly, shouting at them. Get away from here, you thieves! Uh, is there a problem here? asked Crumpet. The priest responded quickly, not wanting any more violence. No, no, they won't harm anyone. We have a problem with thievery around here. Those pesky elves. Anyway, it's nothing to worry about, son, he said as he opened up the large wooden doors. And the trio entered the cold stone building. Inside, the smell of damp stone and stale candle smoke mixed with a faint musty smell of old books. The priest wasted no time lighting several candles around the altar before disappearing into an unseen room to collect some items. Pazrail and Crumpet took in the surroundings. It was small enough, but somehow appeared grandeur in its height and decoration. The large stained glass window added color and beauty to the dull stone walls. 
Ah, here it is, said the priest upon his return. He placed an enormous leather-bound book upon the altar and opened it up to a specific and recently marked section. You see here, these paragraphs refer to the ancient scrolls that were discovered during the dark times, when evil freely wandered throughout the mortal plains, searching for something. Searching for what? I believe that they were looking for the tablet. You see here, the priest pointed towards several depictions of battle, man and beast engaged in mortal combat. My fellow brothers from the Holy Order battled with them to save our souls, all of our souls, and they banished the underworlds from this plane. Pazrael studied the drawings. The men, all wielding glorious shining weapons, were dressed in brilliant white robes fastened to their bodies with immaculate looking armor, a uniform for the gods. How did they achieve this? That knowledge is sacred to the Order, my child. Rest assured, if you fail in your quest, they will return. Hmm. I would question why they are not here already. If you believe this plane to be free from evil, then you are mistaken. I've had many battles with these beasts. Uh, lesser devils, maybe. But these creatures are something entirely different. Still, if you have already confronted these beings, then... Well, it would take a summoning for them to return, or... Or what? Or, if they were to find the tablet, it is said it could harness an unknown power. Look! The priest pointed up to the glass window. It must be destroyed. I... I thought it was me. But I see now it is you. Both of you. You have been chosen by a higher power. You must destroy it. You must destroy the tablet. Pazrael and Crumpet shared a glance. No words were spoken between them, but it was in that very instance that they both agreed. They would play out this charade for the Smokeman, but they both now accepted that the tablet must be destroyed, no matter what the cost. We will destroy it, Father. I can promise you that. But we must find it first, and then we will banish it from this realm. The destruction will surely follow afterwards. Father, we plan to enter the Nine Hells. The priest staggered. Bartle? Yes, and we will destroy it in the very fires we believe created it. Somehow. Oh, my children, if you are to undertake such a journey, you will surely... Hold on, please. The priest scuffled away and disappeared once more. This time, he returned with larger items. He handed them to the willing adventurers. Here, please, take these. Pazrel and Crumpet accepted the large garments and studied them curiously. Essentially, they were long, thick, crimson capes with a gold chain and fastening clips around the neckline. The Cloak of Bartor. They will offer you protection from all levels of the Inferno. They were gifted to me a long time ago by a mighty sorcerer once very close to me, but now sadly lost from this realm. Thank you, Father. We will use them. The priest laughed. Oh, yes. Yes. You will indeed use them if you plan to survive. Down there it is harsh beyond compare. Extremely inhospitable to most beings. Here, here. You will need this too. It is a map. Where does it lead to? There is only one known entrance to the Nine Hells. This is it. The gate to Bartor. Hidden deep in the razor's edge. Pazrael shook his head. Father, you grace us with such blessings. We cannot repay you. Your bravery is just, and your mission is holy. If you return, then you can give them back to me. If you do not, then God help us all. Give me your weapons. Pazrael and Crumpet shared a curious glance, nervous at first to relinquish their weapons. But this man, this priest, was anything but sinister. They placed their weapons on the altar as the priest loomed over them. Slowly, carefully, he collected a small marble chalice and dipping his fingers in the water contained within, gently splashed the liquid over the weapons as he recited a heavenly instruction. Blessed are those with the might of the Lord. Blessed are those who defeat the wicked. Lift these weapons from their basal incarnate. Instill these weapons with a righteous gift. 
The power that comes from the Son, the power that comes from the God, the power that comes from the Almighty. Upon completion, he turned to face his guests. Those beasts down there, they are stronger than you can ever imagine, especially in their own environment. Your weapons normally would be useless against them, but now they are blessed with holy power. All oh, right, nice one, Father. Yes, thank you, Father. The priest sighed as he realized the gravity of this venture, the importance of this task. Things, it seemed, were far more serious than he had realized. And now, you must know this man's whereabouts. He resides further down this street. When you reach the clock tower, turn left until you come across the hay bales. His residence is opposite. I believe you will know when you are near. All right, let's be off then. Thanks again, good sir, and God bless you. The priest frowned. Uh, Cord? Pazrael smiled. <sighs> Don't ask. Indeed, said the priest, as he walked with them to the entrance of the church. Now, he offered them one last piece of advice. I feel I must warn you that the tablet holds a disturbing evil. I felt it when the crazed man came to me, and I can feel it now too. I suspect you already have part of the tablet on your person, but I do not wish to know. No good can come from that thing." Pazrael simply nodded as the priest continued. You know that deception lies at the heart of all stories once evil is involved. I will pray to see you both again. And with the priest's parting words lingering in their thoughts, weighing heavily in their minds, Pazrael and Crumpet left the church grounds and made their way down the long, muddy road in search of a crazed man. Hey there, this is Marshan Steenkamp, voice of Grampet van Donder and various other characters in the Mutiny of Bartor. If you like what we're doing, then you can help us grow by liking and reviewing our content, as well as subscribing to our channel. We thank you, and we'll see you next time on the channel.